When Operation Desert Storm kicked off in 1990, the Grumman F-14 Tomcat was the only fighter in the United States inventory to have successfully scored an air-to-air -air kill in American hands. As such, the expectations were that it would perform well in the Middle Eastern skies, and it did. Instead of serving solely in fighting mode, the F-14s were tied to defensive air patrol, and the model routinely ventured over enemy territory while escorting strike missions. One of the Tomcat-equipped warships of the conflict was USS Saratoga, a massive supercarrier always positioned in the vicinity of the Red Sea. However, an oily deck almost caused an off-duty fatality on one occasion. While taxiing aft to the waste catapults after a mission against Iraq's invasion of Kuwait, an E-2C Hawkeye from the Airborne Command and Control Squadron 125 slid on the carrier's slippery deck. The event was caught on the pilot landing aid television system camera, and it shows how the pilot loses control of his own aircraft, which begins sliding on the flight deck and dangerously approaches an F-14 Tomcat from the VF-103 Sluggers, with all its crew still inside. The Navy Supercarriers Following the outbreak of the Korean War in July of 1950, Secretary of Defense Lewis A. Johnson offered the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Forrest Percival Sherman, a new American carrier. The fiscal year 1952 shipbuilding budget included a massive new class that would bring the United States into the mid-20th century, the Forrestal. USS Saratoga, named after the Revolutionary War battles, was one of the four Forrestal-class supercarriers the United States Navy built in the 1950s. With a massive length of 1,070 feet and a standard displacement of 60,000 tons, or 76,600 tons fully loaded, the so-called supercarriers were 25% larger than the post-World War II Midway-class carriers. As such, the Forrestal-class vessels had the most spacious hangar decks and most extensive flight decks of any carrier ever built, and were capable of harboring up to a hundred aircraft. The Forrestal-class Navy supercarriers were armed with eight Mark 42 5-inch 54 caliber automatic, air, and surface target gun mounts, usually controlled either remotely from a Mark 68 gunfire control system or locally from the mount at the one-man control station. Launched on October 8, 1955, and commissioned the following year, the second Forrestal-class supercarrier began its journey into a long and illustrious naval career. Furthermore, the type was the first to be specifically designed to accommodate jet aircraft, like the Grumman F-14 Tomcat fighter. Saratoga the Great For almost four decades, Saratoga served in the Mediterranean waters, off Guantanamo Bay during the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, or on the coast of Lebanon during the 1967 Six-Day War. She also participated in operations during the Vietnam War, for which she received one battle star for her service. From August 1990 to March 1991, the supercarrier, nicknamed Super Sarah, served during Operation Desert Storm, an armed campaign waged by a 35-country military coalition in response to Saddam Hussein's Iraqi invasion of oil-rich Kuwait. Along with the Navy's embarked air wing, CVW-17, the supercarrier's main participation in the war was primarily in the Red Sea. During the conflict, Saratoga logged an outstanding 11,700 arrested landings and 12,700 sorties and traveled more than 35,000 miles. She also set several world records, including the completion of six transits of the Suez Canal. In addition, U.S. Navy SEALs stationed at Saratoga conducted the first wartime boardings of merchant shipping in the Red Sea as part of Operation Desert Shield. Then, on a rare occurrence, Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein erroneously claimed on national television that the American supercarrier had been sunk, along with other coalition vessels. Saratoga also launched many flights in support of the Coalition's operations, including one led by pilot Scott Speicher, the first American casualty of the war. And in another far-reaching incident, an A6E intruder from Saratoga was shot down during the conflict. During the event, 
Bombardier navigator Lieutenant Jeffrey Zahn was paraded before the cameras by his Iraqi enemy captors, but was luckily returned to American forces and to the carrier. Caution on oily terrain. The supercarrier's incredible feats during the first major conflict for America after the fall of the Soviet Union surprised war planners and the public alike. However, with such a massive landing deck, USS Saratoga's aircraft suffered mishaps on more than one occasion, including some that were caught on the Platts or pilot landing aid television system cameras. The supercarrier could launch and land many missions during the day, and the crew worked day and night to ensure the area was as clean as possible. However, during one of her most busy days, while participating in Operation Desert Storm, a lack of cleanliness resulted in one of the strangest incidents to take place on a supercarrier. The video shows an E-2C Hawkeye from the Airborne Command and Control Squadron 125 in the supersized deck as it taxis aft to the waste catapults. As the footage begins, the Hawkeye can be seen sliding into the oily flight deck, going to its right side. Suddenly, the massive aircraft bumps into a much smaller F-14 Tomcat from Strike Fighter Squadron 103. As it loses control, the Hawkeye completely slices through the fighter's nose, with both of their crews still inside. This was particularly dangerous, as the F-14 Tomcat's large nose contained several bulky and expensive avionics systems, as well as a two-person crew. The video shows dozens of worried sailors immediately coming to the aid. A former VA-35 captain recalled, quote, I was on deck. I was a plane captain with VA-35 at the time the E-2 came to rest on the horizontal stabilizers of one of our KA-6Ds. I'll never forget the sound of this when it happened made me sick to my stomach because I was sure someone got hurt. We were all lucky that night. Making the rounds online. In a surprising outcome, given the severity of the incident, there were no injuries on either aircraft, a testament to the construction of the Tomcat and its outstanding performance during the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, while performing a variety of tasks such as the long-range defense of ships, combat air patrols, escort protection for attack aircraft, and reconnaissance missions with the Tactical Airborne Reconnaissance Pod System. While the names of the crew members aboard the aircraft involved in the incident remain unknown, records indicate the man sitting in the driver's seat of the tractor when the propeller blades went across the hood was Lieutenant Scott Ernest. Despite the incident occurring more than three decades ago, the incredible footage continues to be viewed and debated by thousands of people, including actual witnesses of the event. One viewer even spotted himself running along the deck, trying to help the crew members escape from one of the aircraft after the oily occurrence, and then going inside the Hummer to assess the situation. According to one of the witnesses aboard Saratoga, who later commented on the story, quote, Even though that was over 25 years ago, something like that kind of sticks in your head. Operation Desert Storm was the last time Super Sarah participated in a significant mission as the supercarrier was decommissioned in 1994, still leaving behind an impressive legacy. Thank you for watching Dark Footage. Don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel for more incredible videos and the stories behind them. And for more exciting military content, check out the rest of our other Dark Documentaries channels, where we explore the most epic battles that changed the course of history and the groundbreaking technology that made it possible. Stay tuned.